welcome to the year 2018 in the name of the Lord Jesus. It's a great privilege for us to celebrate the new year and an opportunity to give thanks to God for looking after us all through the year 2017. We give him glory, we give him praise, we give him adoration because he has done all things well. In his mercy, he has brought us to a new year, a year we've never experienced before, we've never seen, we don't even know what it has in store. We don't know what the day, the weeks, the months have for us. But one thing we do know, we know the almighty God, who in his almightiness hold the world in his hands. So I want to address you on faith in the almightiness of God in 2018. Faith in the almightiness of God in 2018. The almighty God is truly almighty in the sense that there is nothing outside his sovereignty. There is nothing beyond his powers. In creation story, the creation story tells us about the fact of creation. And it is recorded that nobody helped him. He consulted with no engineers. He consulted with no architects. He consulted with no designer. But he was the designer. He was the architect. He was the one who brought it to be in his almightiness. The materials he used to establish the universe were unknown before creation. And he brought it to being. So he created out of nothing. The one who created out of nothing will look after us in 2018. Which means there will be nothing outside his control in your life, in the life of your family, in the life of your workplace, and the life of the country that is unknown to him. When he created, we know him as the creator of all things. And he's always in charge. He does not lose control. He's also known as the Alpha and the Omega. The first, that is to say, in the Greek alphabet, the first word and the last letter in the word, in the alphabet, the Greek alphabet, the Alpha and the Omega. That puts him in control from the beginning to the end. And one who knows everything, that even though we are yet to be familiar with the events and situations in 2018, he already knows everything. So he is someone whom can be trusted, be relied upon, because he knows the way. He has been through everything before we, are, we were born or even conceived. When the children of Israel were on their way to, Egypt, to the land of Canaan, he gave them bread from nothing. Bread was sent from heaven. Again, there was no baker that did it. He did it himself. He brought water from the rocks. He supplied their needs. Water from the desert. They got water to drink. In their 40 years of journeying to the land, promised land, they were cared for. Their clothes were not torn. Their shoes were not worn out. He, he took care of them. He made the day and the night in his own wonderful way to the extent that throughout the world, in their different time zones, the night will come in his own season. The sunshine will shine in its own season. People will go to sleep at a particular time. 
People will wake up at a particular time. And so the world in their different time zones are busy at one time or the other. Every time God is busy. Again, the sun in all his powers rules the universe. He put it there. And through the sun, the different heavenly bodies are able to get their, sun, their, their lights. The moon, the stars, and other heavenly bodies. And they are there to testify of the greatness of Almighty God. The deep, the mighty oceans, the Atlantic Ocean, the Pacific Ocean, the Indian Ocean, and other oceans of the world, they demonstrate the mightiness of God. And what is more, the marine life in them, uncountable and numberless. He looks after them all in the demonstration of his almighty power. Reptiles are there. Those that can frighten human beings and so on and so forth. Far greater in size than human beings. And yet, this great God created all these good things and put man in charge. The wild animals are there in the wild, the mighty forests with the tall trees swaying to his command. And he gave us the air to look after us. Even though we don't see it, the effect is undeniable. We have all these things as a testimony of God's goodness to us. Look at the sky heavens, the clouds floating, the bears singing in the air. They all demonstrate the greatness and almightiness of God. And they are fed at their regular meal times. They are all fed, well fed. He provides for them. In the desert, with all his configurations, he keeps the creatures there alive. Wonderful. We serve a wonderful God. We serve an almighty God. We need faith in the almighty power of the almighty God. In 2018, God, this almighty God, this wonderful God, will be there. It's constant. It's ever there. He does not go on transfer. He is never too weak to act. He is never absent. He's ready and willing. In the cold and snowy regions of the world, all animals there survive. Wonderful. This is a wonderful God. This is almighty God. And his almighty power sustains the universe he has created. Therefore, in 2018, which is unknown to us, we don't know anything about it. It's a stranger, a visitor, whom we do not know. But with faith in the almightiness of this God, we can handle 2018. We can enjoy 2018. We can rejoice in 2018. That with faith in Jesus Christ, 2018 will be a blessing to us. One, in which area? For human beings, the primary need will be health. Good health. To attend to our multiple needs. He is the healer. He healed the people and took away the disease of Egypt from them. In 2018, the healer, the great physician, will be there. So that if your, our problems as individuals has to do with ill health, this great healer, 
this in his almighty power, in the almightiness of his power, the power that created the universe, we heal the different cells in your bodies. As complicated as the body is, being an individual unit of a machine, he knows the number of cells in these bodies. He can rebuild them, he can renew them, he can refresh them, he can make the, die, the dead ones to come alive again. So faith in this almighty God is important in 2018. Furthermore, the problem cannot be hunger because we are dealing with one who created our body to demand food. So in 2018, he will make food available to us. He provided for the Israelites in the wilderness. And ever since, he has always provided. Our Lord Jesus Christ himself, in chapter 6 of John's Gospel, provided food for the crowd. He fed them and they had enough and to spare. In 2018, this almighty God and in his almighty power will give you food to eat. You will have enough and to spare. You will not beg for bread. We need faith in the almightiness of this God. Some of us have a very morbid fear of witches and wizards in our traditional settings, villages and so on, even in the cities. But I can tell you that we are dealing with one who has made a public show of principalities and powers, who disarmed them, taking away their powers to harm, taking away their weapons. But then you must have the life of God. You must have the life of Christ in you. You must be born again. When you are born anew, then you are transferred from the kingdom of death to the kingdom of life. You pass from death to life. Your name is written in the book of life. And anybody who is reading incantations in your name or with your name, the effort will come to nothing. So even if they gather around you, you will pass them and their powers cannot harm you because you have been transferred to the kingdom of life. Furthermore, there might be people who are persecuting you diabolically through medicine men, through all forms of ways, hatred, wickedness, bitterness. But in 2018, if you have faith in the almightiness of God's power, you will be delivered. You are assured of victory, whoever the, your persecutors may be. They are not up to the living God. They are not up to the power of almighty God. The battle is the Lord's. If you put faith in him, you will not be put to shame. We know that because of the recession, which thankfully has been pronounced uh, over as uh, so an uh, event that is ended, a situation that has come to an end, some businesses are still in shambles. Some are struggling to recover. In 2018, the Lord will visit you. The Lord will visit you even if the recession is not ended. It will end in your life. It will end in your business. It will end in your resources. The recession will come to an end. And your business will pick up again. And you will give thanks to God. He has the power to command his wealth to come to you. He has the power to command resources to improve. Because he commanded even the creation and it came to be. He said, let there be light. And there was light. Let there be uh, water. And there was water. Let there be this. Let the day be like this. And they obeyed. That powerful word, creative word, 
is still available. He will command your circumstance. He will command your businesses. He will command your resources. And they will come to be. Even the, those who have done some work and they have refused to pay you. The government has refused to pay you. Maybe because you do not belong to the right quarters. God will give instruction. And they will send for you. Mr. Man, we have seen your file. Come and collect your money. We have been looking for you. It will happen to you this year. By the almighty power of God. Faith in the almightiness of God. We make it possible for you. And you will be refreshed. You will live again. You will not be a dry tree. You will be like a, the palm tree planted by the waterside. There are some of you young people who have broken homes already. You are not able to understand your husband. You are not able to understand your wife. You are just not able to move forward. There is a terrible complication in your marriage. The Lord will sort it out in 2018. The Lord will visit you and you will eat with him. The new light will come upon you and your husband and you will see clearly. You will be able to understand. You will be able to see. You will be able to hear. You will be able to understand what the Lord is saying. And a new life will come to you. In this new life, you will worship God. Because the Almighty has done great things for you. It will transform the decay in your marriage and take it away. And bring freshness, bring newness that will be your song. You will sing the song of Zion. There are some of you young people, boys or girls, who have been disappointed in your relationship. Your, the person you promised to marry uh, has jilted you. The person who promised you has jilted you. And you are so confused. You have wasted your time and so on. But let me tell you, there is no lateness in God's own economy. He programmed everything. Stop being bitter. Stop being unhappy. Stop being frustrated. The one the Lord God is sending to you is around the corner. He will visit you and a new relationship will develop. You will not remember the lateness because there will be no lateness. The dryness that you think about will, be, will vanish and your life will be refreshed again because the Lord will make things to be new for you. You are bearing children. You are having the satisfaction of a married man, of a married woman will be complete for you. So do not be bitter. Do not be frustrated. Do not be unhappy. Do not take it out on anybody. Avoid being vengeful. For the Lord God is working out a miracle for you. This year, 2018, you will experience the mighty power of, the created, of God Almighty who created all things. There are situations, helpless situations about our national life. In this country, maybe you have been thinking too much about the problems of the nation as a politician, as a traditional ruler, as a church leader. You are bothered about the political trends in the country. Now, I want to assure you that such problems that have been eating us and have consumed a colossal amount of our money, e.g., Light, power supply, unemployment, political situations, Boko Haram, kidnapping, hairsmen palaver, medical problems, education, labor issues, they are all nagging us. And some of us have started to give up. To say, well, maybe there will be no solution actually. We are just going on and rolling on and rolling on. Well, I can tell you, I don't know about human beings. I, as a servant of God, can only trust God. Trust his almighty power. 
to change situations, to transform situations, that he who created the world out of nothing can transform our situation. That he who created human beings, he who created and made the, the mighty water to be there and knows all that it contains, he who created the nerves, the cells, the blood streams in the body, and he orders the whole machine of the body to work, he will make Nigeria to work. Things will be, there will be a change for the better in this country. And all our frustrations will be, will be, will be over. We cannot, in all honesty, trust any man. For we have seen men in all their tricks, in all their demonstrations, in all their powers, and in what the utterances, what they promise, what they do, what they, they, they claim to, to, that they will do, we have seen all. But none has brought relief to the necessity of people. All we get is explanation, 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 explanation. So many people are beginning to wonder, shall we ever get it right? I can assure you that man may not be able to fulfill anything for us. But we can pray down the power of God that in our trust for the Almighty God, He can have mercy upon us. He can have mercy upon us. There are a class of people who actually do not bother so much as long as it is well with them and their families. But we appeal our case above them and hand over to God. And I want to encourage you to join the group that is crying unto God to send down power, to send down mercy, to send down favor upon the people of Nigeria. So that east, west, north, and south we blossom. We blossom so that there will be life in the desert. There will be water everywhere. There will be heavy rain, heavy rain of blessing for the people of this country. And everyone will be happy. In your home, as a husband, as a wife, maybe you have wayward children. You have difficulties you are not able to solve. You probably have delay in childbirth and everything appears to be falling aside, falling apart. This is a time in 2018 when you will reap your, the fruit of your labor. When God will wipe away your tears that those things that keep you awake at night will no longer be there to afflict you and your family. That God will visit you and you will know laughter again. You will know joy. Your tears will be wiped away. And you can join your fellow women. You can join your fellow men to be happy when God visits you this year. And this visit, you only need to prepare. It's coming. It's coming. It's around the corner. God Almighty, who created the universe out of nothing, in his almighty power, is a God of solutions. This God of solutions is bringing solution to your corner. Is bringing solution to your family. Is bringing solution to you as an individual. Is bringing solution to your job. Is bringing solution to your business. Is bringing solution to your extended family. Is bringing solution to Nigeria. Nigeria needs the solution that has eluded us so far. He is bringing solution. We need to trust him that he can turn things around. That Nigerians will no longer perish in, this, in the Mediterranean Sea. That our children will no longer be food for the fish. That there will be a solution. Our children will stay at home because there will be something to rely upon. So in this 2018, we do not know what it has in store. We do not know what the day has. We do not know what the weeks have. We do not know what the months have. But we do know the one who holds the day, the one who holds the weeks, the one who holds the months in his almighty hand. If you trust him, if you have faith in him, you will rejoice. 
because it never loses control. Whether you pass through water, you pass through fire, it will keep you. You will succeed. And 2018 will be a great blessing to you, a great blessing to your family, a great blessing to your work, a great blessing to Nigeria. God bless you in 2018. May your life shine in 2018. May it be well with Nigeria in 2018. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.